Hi, my name is Adam Lloyd. Welcome to Tech Unveiled. In today's episode, we're talking Ericsson 5G Advanced and high-performing programmable networks. With me today are two Ericsson experts in real life and on virtual. Please welcome Jakob and Patrick. Hey, Hi, guys. Nice to meet you. Hi, Adam. Nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Should we grab a coffee? Absolutely. Good. Let's go. Let's do it. It's good for you to, to join me here. Um, Ericsson 5G Advanced is uh, a key enabler to what we call high-performing programmable networks. So starting with you, Jakob, what do we mean by high-performing programmable networks? Yeah, so the high-performing part refers to networks that are sustainable and delivers a great user experience at low TCO. Now the programmability part, it's uh, the fact uh, that the networks are able to scale to support multiple services in an efficient way. Uh, and that's important for operators to be able to offer differentiated connectivity to enable revenue growth. And why is programmability itself so important right now in networks? Yeah, so the programmability part is the intent-based scaling of multiple services. Uh, so in an efficient way to support a multi-service network, basically. So it's a, a service-aware, intent-driven and AI-based architecture we're going towards. Uh, but another way of looking at programmability is basically the, the APIs that are opening up for developers to make use of those differentiated connectivity levels in the networks in order for them to enhance existing apps or even to develop new apps on top of this. So Ericsson 5G Advanced is a major step on this journey. Then turning to you now, Patrick, I mean, what examples do we see here? I mean, so there's a multitude of examples with uh, 5G and 5G Advanced uh, that, that is actually being explored around the globe today. Uh, one such case is uh, live uh, media broadcasting, um, where we have a slightly higher demand than the normal best effort mobile broadband connections. Uh, and that's where our product uh, can deliver a sustainable uh, service level agreement uh, for, for the media broadcasting. It's interesting, that the live broadcasting area, why are we seeing that traction there? Is it simplification or any examples of where we're using this? Yeah, um, simplification is, uh, is the, I think, the key word here. So today in the live media broadcast, they have a backhaul with satellite and they have a lot of cables running. And with, you know, with a direct connectivity with the 5G network, they can get closer to the action. Uh, they can see the athletes or whatever is going on on the screen in real time. Uh, and one such example, uh, we just had this summer here in Sweden, at Stockholm Marathon, where uh, the Operator 3 used live uh, broadcasting uh, to, to monitor the event. And Jakob, what, what other new services then will Ericsson 5G Advance bring? Yes, I think one of my favorite examples is a recent launch by Deutsche Telekom of cloud gaming, actually. And what they did was they used some of our 5G advanced functionality, which is called L4S, guaranteeing a, a stable, consistent latency at the expense of throughput in order to support the latency criticality of that use case. So is this going to benefit devices such as this, for example? Yes, exactly. I mean, the uh, cloud VR gaming is one example of a service that can benefit from this. Others are AR or uh, remote driving, for example. Yeah, and uh, this is like fantastic, this AR, VR, and all this gaming for, for consumer space, right? But we also have the, uh, the business critical use case. So this is where we marry the uh, red cap, uh, uh, new device types, together with the programmability in the network. So for example, uh, remote pay terminals. Um, typically, you would have these in, in big high traffic areas, like stadium events. So if you were to go to buy your hot dog, for example, you really want to make sure that every time you swipe the card or pay with your phone, you will get payment. So this is one business critical uh, example. Another case uh, from Australia where Optus is exploring uh, pedestrian awareness. So uh, in an industrial setting in order to protect the, the users from um, you know, uh, machines hitting them. Yeah, well, what about uh, this outdoor positioning? I mean, offering location-based services with or without uh, GPS, how is that going to bring value to the CSPs? Hmm. That's an interesting comment, Adam. Actually, we see there is an increased possibility for CSPs to explore monetization in this area, and it's basically down to two factors. One is the increased proliferation of GPS-enabled devices, and the second is the increased accuracy from the 5G SA networks. 
So the second one, then, if we start with that, we, here we see that our functionality for 5G standalone and in, five, in Ericsson 5G Advanced can provide sub-20 meter accuracy in line of sight for use cases such as emergency positioning, lawful intercept or consent-based commercial services. For the first one, the GPS-enabled cases, we see that sub-centimeter accuracy is possible with the uh, uh, correction data that can be broadcasted with the help of the networks here. And that can enable new use cases such as use cases in automotive area or in airspace or in robotics, for example. And Patrick, I mean, we touched on it a little bit there, mission critical networks. What about things like public safety? Yeah, I mean, public safety is, is in 5G now. Um, what 5G brings together with 5G Advance and the programmability is the support for multiple services. So uh, the classic uh, mission critical is walkie talkie, push to talk. Uh, voice priority with, with, uh, with many users, but what's coming now is the situational awareness. So uh, we have the body cams for the police and firemen. So the first responders would then have immediate access to what's happening on the scene. Uh, right? And here is where the, the high performance programmability comes in. We can secure the connectivity for, for these first responders. So in summary then, with Ericsson 5G Advanced, CSPs will get the software they need to really transform their 5G network into a programmable multi-service network. And of course, one key focus on that is revenue generation. It's been a great discussion today. Thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to a lot more talks around this on programmability and service awareness in the RAN. But for now, Patrick, Jakob, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Good, let's go. Tune in to our next episode as we continue to uncover the networks of the future. Until then, thanks for watching. Goodbye.